so we will go ahead now that I'm recording and we will start this session where we last picked up which is you all inside the very first room besides the main hall of Citadel Freyundar. There is currently nobody that is acting in aggression towards you at this time that you see. So we will not go currently into combat rounds, although I want to stress that all of you are well aware at least of this fact that there are more things within that are now likely anticipating you. Patches, why did they shoot at you? I uh, suspect it's because they didn't want any visitors. I didn't do nothing to them. They just saw me and fired. Do they live here? Are we breaking and entering? Is everybody okay? Did anyone get injured? Oh. I, I took an arrow in the shoulder, but I'll be fine. I've had worse. Do you need help with it? No, I'm, I'm good right now. I'm fine. I don't think these guys are very fine, though. Sh should we, like... Help? Are they dead? Did we kill people? Yeah, we did. They had it coming, though. Don't you worry. <laughs> sounds like sounds like there's more further in. I, I expect they're here for the same reason we are, to, to grab the treasure. Only thing I... I ain't sure of is where they came from. Don't we look like... Daddy. Well, we can yeah. ask them where they came from. Maybe they're from Zobek, too. Have you uh, seen it, dwarves this... like that? These look no. like folks I expect live underground year-round. Well, there's the under Zobek. They might live under. Anyway, we should go probably, maybe. I don't know. Unless we want to have like a picnic or something. That'd be fun. We, we should definitely um, guard that door down there because I, I have a feeling that more will show up. Uh, should should we hold here with the ballista? Says Prudence. We need to make a decision if we stay outside or inside. So inside is specifically built to funnel people in into swords, into arrows. So we need to be careful. From this we should out. definitely keep going further in. We went through all that trouble to break down the door and get in here. But we don't know how many are past us. I how many are we taking? Them. They already know that we're here, so if we don't continue to follow through, we're going to expect them later. Or we could wait here for them, let them funnel into us. Well, there's, there, there's a bottleneck, but it's um, we need to, to um, take command of that door there. Against the wall. Perhaps the scout should go ahead. Well, I think our scout is um, injured at the moment. Uh, how, how bad you looking, Patches? Uh, I'll be fine. I just took a little bit of a flesh wound. If, so if y'all really feel bad, you can, you can maybe heal me, but I ain't too worried. Patches, <clears throat> how long does that growth that you cast over one of the ballistas, how long does that last? It lasts... One second. Uh... Uh, one minute. So I'll just I'll just go ahead and drop it. Yeah, I think a minute's definitely gone by. Yeah. Ben's going to uh, send out a large bunch of wasps, and they're going to form into a mage hand, and he's going to come down this way. I can move my character and be about right there. So in this room. Just to point out, there's the two ballistas, a large uh, a table with many small chairs, a few shelves of items, and a armoire of sorts. You are right next to an open door that leads out to a uh, stone walkway similar to the sides that you came down from the in that large hallway. And there's another door to the south. 
This door is closed. I uh, I have a feeling that we're no matter what we do, there's not really a stealthy approach to this because it seems pretty dark all around, and some of us can't see without light, so we're gonna need it. Well, fair enough. Perhaps we should try this door to the south. They all seem to have gone through this here door to the east, so... Maybe we'll go this way and see if we can get the jump on them. Yeah, maybe. Uh, is it locked? We could try it out. Patches is just going to try the door, not actually open it, just to see if it's locked. The door to the south? Yeah. It is, uh, it does not appear to be locked. Okay. Well, it looks like we can get through here if we want to, so it's all just about just deciding which way we want to go. Can, can, um, Tendi go up and put their ear against the door and listen through the door to see if there's anything? Sure. You go up and you put your <clears throat> large ear up to the door and you give a listen. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Is, uh, you hear some light wind blowing, but other than that, nothing, no other activity comes through that Breeze? door. Breeze? Breezy? A, a breezy? You said like, like wind? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, stand back a little bit. I'm going to, I'm going to send my friends and i'll have sin uh turn the knob and open the door with the mage hand you're gonna open the bottom door yeah okay this one you all die i'm kidding it opens <laughs> it opens up to a short hallway there's a, a room uh looks like directly a 10 feet down and then a way to the left and to the right if you want I can try and scout ahead. Be careful. Prudence would like to quickly investigate the bodies before we all leave. Okay. You go up to the bodies. Uh, what is it ab about them you would like to investigate? Misses or items. <laughs> Sorry, I, I I have too many windows open. I can't always have Discord open. <laughs> uh, remind. Okay, so you're looking for anything on their persons? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, on let's see, there are four of them. So it's going to take you a little bit of time to inspect to inspect each and every one of them, but uh, besides what they were uh, normally carrying on their person, or like you know the light crossbow and the hooked spears that each of them seemed to carry, uh, they were also wearing. <laughs> One second. Wow, really? Okay. Uh, so they were carrying a light crossbow, a hooked spear, and wearing leather armor. Far too small to fit most of you. Uh, but also, uh, you get 16 copper from one individual, 19 copper from another, 10 silver from the third, and 9 silver from the fourth. I have a question. Yes. The door that we're not looking, like the one that the gentleman walked down or ran down, is that a door? Does it open out into the hallway or does it open into the room? It it opens out to another hallway where there looks to be a five foot uh, walkway before meeting another wall. But just to the south east of that door on the right, there you can see a bit of uh, like 
a pool, a tub of water that's about 10 feet wide, like a, sort of like a trough. Okay, but the door opens out into the hallway and not into, like we can't put something in front of the door to keep them from opening it on their way back. Correct. correct. Both doors go out. Uh, quick question. What was the amount of money again? The last one was nine silver. Okay. Well, I'm going to try and scout ahead a tiny bit see if I can see what's awaiting us. I promise I will return as soon as possible. Uh, okay. Um, be careful. Last time you got shot, so uh, you should take Mara with you. Mara, you good at moving unseen? She can turn into a cat. I saw her do oh, that. That's, that's really true. Cool. Did you guys see it too? Yeah, you saw it too. All right, Mara, are you ready to do this? I'll only go if you want to. Wait, can you guys hear me? I no. was was I muted? Now, now we can hear you. Yep. Oh, okay. Yes, I will go. Give me just one second. I'm like, no, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Jordan, I'd like to, like, try and stealthily scout ahead. Yeah, if you're both gonna go, then I will require you guys to both make a stealth roll as you oh, are. Oh, yeah, mine's a... Wait, I'm gonna do Wild Shape. It's a free action, so... Okay. There we go. 17 stealth. I just have to pick one. <laughs> Velociraptor. <laughs> I don't think you've seen a Velociraptor yet. <laughs> I don't want to laugh so loud. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> let's, um, let's put those barrels in front of this other door, just so we don't have any surprises. They also nod, but looks at the table instead and points at it. Is That's there a not better a plan. clock or a, a wolf? Oh, it's probably not. I thought the, the, cat, the cat had pretty good stealth skills, right? Yeah, I can do a cat again. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're not, we're not fighting cat. anything. Okay. Okay. Well, but if we run into anything, I'm not going to be able to help very much. Yeah, if we run into anything, we're running back. Okay. We're uh, doing the Han Solo thing where he sees, like, the big group of stormtroopers and then just turns around. So you... Uh, Third monitor. Jesus Christ. Mara, you shape shift using one of your um, druidic abilities to change into a cat. Yeah, I do wild shape. Okay. Uh, this gives you plus four to your stealth roll. So it's going to be, you use the um, use the stats of the beast, that, but you the, as far as physical stats. But you mm -hmm. keep, you maintain your intelligence and whatnot throughout. Yes. So. And my items. Mm -hmm. So your stealth roll is going to be a d20 plus 4, as the cat has a plus 4 to its stealth. Ba -ba -ba. D20. 24. Wow. Woo! Nice. Sound <laughs> forgot itself around you as, <laughs> as you uh, as you basically make absolutely no noise. Uh, and you guys begin your trek southward out of this room. You see a hall that goes to the left and around the corner. You are now sort of between two rooms and a wall at the end of the hallway. And you see the f a familiar uh, pool of water that was from the other doorway. Do you guys close the other door? Uh, Leosin and Sin are gonna barricade it. Uh, like the, like this one? Or... I think. Hold, you would hold down. Okay. Uh, yeah, do I have to do any sort of strength check to roll the table in front of it? Nah. Okay. While they're, while they're gone, Leosin's gonna be stacking stuff, like, the table against the wall and then just kinda barricading yeah, around it. You Sorry. can, you can see a door right here. 
And at in this middle hallway, you see a door here and a door immediately uh, right right next to you. Okay, Patches is just going to pop back in and say, hey, both these doors go to about the same place, so just beware. We have some nuts. Um, we should probably uh, make sure that this door and the other door that Prudence is standing in is also because they, they could come around behind us and give us a surprise. Yeah, Austin thinks about it for a second, but that's an agreement. All right, let's keep going this far. You notice that this door to your south is open. Just a crack. Mm -hmm. Another hallway, Mara, that leads in all directions, except for south. Do I know that the left goes off the map? No. Okay. Patches, you can see a long hall that goes all uh, goes pretty far down, and if I don't, if I recall, you see. Uh, sort of rocky a rocky edge at the end of it uh, Mara just yeah. okay, so f you guys are both moving independently so I gotta take it one thing yeah. at a time um, so we should probably move together. Mara yeah. you see you, I'll follow you. you you see a open doorway right here yes you also see a door that's closed over here and I talk as a cat no. Okay. That's fine, Mara. Yeah. It's pretty quiet anyway. <laughs> Meow! Can I, can I cast <laughs> Speak with Animals? As, oh, shit! As, oh, no! Oh, amazing! As, as you pop your head through the door with your torch, which I don't think you can carry as a cat. Yeah, what's the cat carrying the torch? They, they're <laughs> just cat eyes, but I can't see anything on the map. <laughs> you can carry... Well, a, cat, a cat would have dark vision, right? Uh... Maybe? Okay. Cats, cats do, do. not mm -hmm. have dark vision. Uh -oh. They have advantage on wisdom good. perception checks that rely on smell. But okay. uh, for the moment, uh, there are three individuals that you, or at least one that you can see in this room, that will go ahead and immediately uh, run towards you. No, he doesn't. I'm still using him here. Hmm. He doesn't know I'm here. I poked my head in and I'm a cat. Carrying a torch? With a... I'm only using the torch because otherwise I literally can't see on the map. Do you want me to go in dark? If... So, yeah. Well, that's, so, that's the rules. Yeah, cats cats do not have dark vision, so you would be okay. going in the dark. Alright, well now I can't move my torch. <laughs> I'll, move, I'll move the torch back up here. Yeah. Okay. I was just taking it with me because I can't see anything. Okay. You should be able to see, because this room is lit. Okay, yeah. So I, I can see a uh, dude from Lord of the Rings. I don't know a dude from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Well, the Hobbit movie, you know, he looks like the elf. The, the He looks like Lee Pace, basically, is what I'm saying. He, he looks at you as you're a cat, and he kind of looks at something but else in the he, room. But person. does he notice me with my stealth? I'm just trying to understand. Uh, so stealth works when you are not in plain sight. Oh, okay. So, However, yeah. you are a cat. So here, I'll, yeah. I'll narrate what happens. So he looks at you and kind of raises, cocks his head to the side. And he looks over at some something else in the room and goes, we bring any cats down here? No. When he looks back, I'm gone. You're, st you're still standing there. There you go. He goes, I'm gonna... I'll take a look. Patches, where'd you go? Would I would I hear that? Yeah. Meow! Okay, so Patches is gonna kind of beat me around the corner. Yeah, so you better hurry, because you hear footsteps as he walks out. I'll pass him as a cat. So Patches will stealthily run back to the group, say, we got, we got incoming. 
spot of Mara. You have, How many? You have 40 feet of movement. Are you, uh, real real quick, Mara, he is outside the room. Are you staying where you are or are you running? 10, 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, 30, 40. Okay, I'll go back here. And now, do I want to stay as a cat? Um, for now, yes. You hear footsteps getting closer. Okay. Can I keep moving, or do I have to wait for my turn again? You can. Right now, you can. You can. There's no combat turns, so. Okay, so I can just. Just letting you know that the footsteps seem to be coming your way. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna go meow. When they, where are they? The footsteps? Yeah. They're coming from behind you, down south. Okay. I'm gonna try to weed them away, so I'm gonna be like, meow. Hey, meow. Footsteps pause for a moment. And. A single set of footsteps follows in your direction. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna do like a. And y'all better know what that means. Uh, Poppy, if it's loud enough, can technically understand you because she speaks with animals like all the time. Yeah. Uh, so I'm telling, I'm telling y'all, uh, that I'm gonna try to lead them away, but you guys need to come up behind them. I, I, if can you we hear that? Can we can hear they? her meows? You hear the meow, and <laughs> Poppy, in order for you to be able to understand animals, don't you have to activate something? I can cast it at will. Um, it's beast speech. You can cast speak with animals at will without expending a spell slot. Okay, so I assume that you guys were smart enough to plan that ahead of time before Whoa. going out. She became a cat, and Poppy likes talking to animals, so I just kind of assumed that she would have. You gotta let me know. But okay. yes, but yeah, you were able to hear Mara as a cat meowing, and to only Poppy, Mara, what do you say? Um, I say I'm leading them away. Come up, uh, so you guys can come up behind them. She's leading them away, so we can come up behind them. I don't know who they are, but we'll find out soon, I'm sure. Uh, best right, we hurry then. Good. You get a go you get another meow. And I say there's two at least. There, there's two at least. The footsteps are now right next to you. He goes. Oh. Um. Oh no! I don't remember there being any cats down here. Um. Where are they in this hallway that I'm in? Yeah, you, right now it's dark. You can't see much. You are okay. You have but they don't have like a torch on them then either, right? They also don't have a torch on them. Whether okay. they, whether I'm gonna run in between their legs. Whether they can see in the dark or not, you don't know. But that's fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna take my chances. I'm gonna run back down because this is a dead end. I can't go through here. Oh well, yeah, there what? is. No, hold on. There is a hallway that you can feel is open. To the north of you and to the south of you, but there, right. you but are I gotta up... get out of this one I'm in right now. So I'm run between um, their legs and go here. I would, okay. I would like to shoot that guy. Okay, hold, hold on. We're like I said, we're not, we're not in combat yet, but I will keep that in mind. Mara, yeah. To run between his legs, make a acrobatics check with advantage. Cats have a plus two to their deck, so it's a d20 plus two. And you would roll that twice and take the higher result. Can I just do it once because this has two things? Uh, oh, no, when, wait. Yeah, when you roll oh, a regular. Yeah. yeah, when you roll a regular d20. Ah! Okay. Oh. Okay. Nine. Uh, you get a bit uh, tripped up, and you only make it that far. Okay. Meanwhile, uh, everyone else, stop moving. Uh, Patches, you were out enough to be able to get a, get a good view of this. Yeah, I can see I'm just on the edge of my uh, yeah sixty foot. Yep. So you uh, so turn. go ahead and take your your shot. 
But then after that, we will probably need to roll initiative as there's been there will be an attack. Mm, that would be an eleven. That hits. Oh, okay. Well, the arrow as then... the as the man kind of trips up over Mara, uh, running between his legs. Uh, kind of looks down and does not see to defend himself in time for your arrow to fly true and hit him square in the chest. There's seven, and then Jolene is going to do her little reaction to give me an extra five damage. So that would be 12 damage total. The arrow hits his chest and immediately uh, freezes over as he goes Hah! and falls over uh, to where there are more noises and commotion coming from uh, a few a couple of rooms so it's everyone's favorite time of day can we tell what direction the meowing is coming from and stuff uh f from where you're at not necessarily it echoes through the halls okay but uh you, there, you have a torch and someone left a torch in the other room uh, someone else want to carry the other torch so Mara can have her torch back. I have a torch. Yes, tend to carry. Okay. 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 Jordan, what's the duration on Wild Shape? I think it's a while, right? You're asking me like that a. was like an hour. Ask me like I've played I played a druid before. I almost rolled initiative for the torch. That would have been weird. I think it's, yeah, it's half my level. Uh, a and B shape for a number of hours equal to half your druid level rounded down. So got yeah. it. So yeah, you're, you're good for hour. at least an hour. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Everyone added their initiative. Yes? No? Yes. Yes. Okay. I have yes. All right. We, that will go ahead. What, so, Prudence, you hear the sound of an arrow and hit someone in the chest, and they let out a short before falling over and hitting the ground. Um, it is coming from this direction. Prudence is going to run towards it. Okay. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. You now can see uh, Mara the cat, a fallen over humanoid, and then Patches and uh, Jolene on the other side of the hallway. You have five feet of movement left. Uh, are you right? Uh, I'm. Who are you asking? I'm guessing. Patches. Both. Meow. I'm fine. We got company though, right? Yeah, right you. Close to us. You hear commotion of swords being drawn and footsteps coming from the room to your south, Prudence, and from uh, behind you, like to the right. But they obviously will be doing something on their turn. You have five feet of movement left and an action. Uh, she'll keep moving forward. Okay, five feet. Oh, are you going to dash? Because this would be, that's where you would be for 40 feet of movement. Okay. Prudence will raise her fists and wait. You can. Do you want to hold your act, your attack for if you see an enemy within melee range? Because that would be what. Yeah, okay. I assume that would be the case. So Prudence, you kind of hold up your fists and get into a fighting stance, waiting for the first sorry sad sack to come your way, as you're going to cold clock him. Now this is going to be a reaction on your turn when you decide to. 
when the trigger is met, when there's someone within five feet of you, you would only be able to do an attack. Just letting you know. But you would be able to punch them. Um, okay. So you are there, kind of hearing the noise from the door just in front of you, further in the room where you cannot quite see. Um, and we then go to Poppy. Okay, okay, okay. Um, she's kind of panicking, because that's what Poppy does. But she's gonna move forward. 20. 25, 30. And that's as far as I can go. All that's right. where she thinks everyone went. She can kind of see Pop, uh, not Poppy, Prudence a little bit. Yeah, you can see Prudence. You see the, the silhouette of Prudence standing in front of a doorway with her fist clenched. Uh, as the light from the room just beyond her is letting a little bit of light out into the hallway. So you can see that. Um, you have an action. Do you want to hold it for anything? I think I'm going to use my action to dash, actually. Okay, sounds good. Because if anything comes, I won't be able to see it. Um, actually, no. I'm going to hold my action for if anything comes and this opposite direction okay so do you, do you see prudence and you immediately go okay she's got whatever she's got and you look the other way yeah i look the other way knowing that there is that area right there okay uh the light reaches the end of this and you see that there is a door here by the way and here okay so if anyone walks out of either of those i will prepare my action to eldritch blast them perfect Okay. I will move right here instead, though, so that people can get past me. Unless they could Pe already. People could already. Not, yeah, people can I'm already. I'm five feet wide. That's correct. They, they just can't be in the same spot as you at the end of you, the So Mara could go between his legs because she is a tiny cat. Um, mm -hmm. Any creature that takes up a five foot, if you are allied with them, odds are you're probably going to move out of the way, right? But you, yeah. you would not be able to do that to an enemy because they are obviously opposing you, and that would require things like uh, either acrobatics or something like that. So, mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. We then go to the whitest-haired elf I know, Patches. <laughs> All right. Um, Patches is just going to, uh, to move forward a tiny bit. Um, and then he'll just ready an action to shoot somebody if he sees them in this uh, hallway. Okay. I um, want to ask a quick question since I'm just looking at the video feed. Um, it looks like Tendi and uh, Leofton are in the exact same square. Voila. Okay. <laughs> this is kind of funny how he out from behind Stand, st standing <laughs> over the cat going I will protect this yeah. cat with my life <laughs> would anyone be surprised <laughs> alright Pat so yeah you step forward a little bit yeah uh huh and I'll just ready an arrow to shoot uh, anybody that comes in this like uh, in front of me passage okay and then uh, Jolene's gonna go 5, 10, 15, 20, 20 30, 35 right there and just she's just gonna chill out. <laughs> Ice dragon pun. She, Got it. Yeah, she's not gonna ready an action because she'll want to use her save her reaction to infuse some of the strike if they get a hit off. Sounds good. Lee often there seems to be combat afoot in this maze labyrinth of hallways in a dwarven of all places citadel. So Lee Austin's going to uh Hustle his hoofies uh, this way. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. Okay. Oh wait, so that's a wall. Okay. Yep. You see a wall. You see a door, and you see another door. And you see a poppy. The door mm. itself above you is obviously open. 
Oh. I'm gonna kind of dance out of Poppy's way. Well, that's a trough. He's not gonna stand in that. Mm -hmm. If I stand in front of Poppy, her blast is not gonna hit me, is it? Her blast? Her Eldritch blast. No, 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 no. But you, okay. that's. So you were 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. You can't end your turn in her square. No. And you can't go beyond her square unless you dash. No. So, um. Uh, gonna take a step up this way. Oh, oh sir. Excuse <laughs> me, sir. Uh, my, my recommendation would be to use the arrow keys once you have your token highlighted. Let me, okay, thank you. Let me move you back. So thank just, you very much. I'm not doing that. Yeah, I'm just... I, yeah, I know. Cl just click on your token and use the arrow keys because you can move your character five square, you know, a square at a time. So that way it's easier to, to count. Um, oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. If you click on the little ruler on the side too and then click on your token, it'll tell you how much. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, that might have been what was causing the issue because it was dragging them all over the place. But you are in front of a door. It's a closed door, but it's a door nonetheless. Your greatest enemy stands Doors. before you. <laughs> okay. I don't know if I could survive another one. You have a bonus action and an action. Do you wish to use any of them? I would like to hold my action for when an enemy comes into melee range. So I'm assuming if something comes out of this door. But for right now, he just puts his shields up and get ready. Fair enough. Sounds good. We then go to Tendi. There are commotions coming from beyond uh, Poppy's and Patch's directions. So I can see Patches. Isn't there a door somewhere there's over a, here? There's an open door here, and there's a door closed right here. Ping those again. A door right here. That's oh, open. No, that's closed. And a door right here that you can see a little bit into because it's cracked. Oh, that changes what I was going to do. Uh, I guess I'll come over here. And I'm going to um, press to digitize this torch out that I'm holding. You're going to turn it off? Yeah. Okay. The torch goes out without any uh, any burned extremities. Actually, I'm going to stand here instead. So 5, 10, 15. Okay. And then I action for press the digitation. You still have some more movement yet, or you want to stay where you're at? Can I hear anything from this way? Uh, you can't hear anything. Then I'm going to go in that direction. You have 15 more feet of movement. 5, 10, 15. Okay. As you look inside, this one looks like a, uh, there's bookshelves with some various, uh, writings. There's a table you can oh, see no. with like a map on it. Um, and a couple of desks and a bench. Um, and... I believe you can see uh, a doorway right here that is closed. Just the edge of a doorway. But the inside of this room is lit. Seems that there's no hallway lights. It's always just lights inside of rooms. Uh, bonus actions? Uh, no, I don't think I have it. Okay. We then go to number one. Number one. Uh, let's see. They need to make a. Okay. Okay. Ba 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 ba. Okay. Uh, 
15. Prudence, you hear a door open. As 15, 20. He, lo he uh, doesn't seem to... He can see you barely off of the glow from the room. So he backs up uh, 15, 20, 25, 30. Um, sword drawn, kind of looking at you as he sort of backs into the uh, a little bit into the darkness. Uh, beyond him, you don't see a wall. You see black behind him. Too afraid to fight? <laughs> No, not quite. Uh, we then go to... It appears he's going to be holding his action. But you don't know that. Um, hmm. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Prudence, from the room of the door that you're in, out comes a man with a rapier in his hand. But you can react and punch him before he gets a chance to do anything. Punch him. I clock his stupid face. And it's a scimitar. I'm sorry. It's a scimitar. Big difference. You punch him. Whew. You, you, you do that for sure with an 18 or 5 damage. You basically just kind of... And his mask, which you can tell when you hit it, is sort of a... It's not flimsy like tin foil but it's not solidly hard so it caves a bit um, as your fist makes an imprint into his uh, malleable mask and it goes off into various uh, points uh, as blood begins to trickle down into his mouth and his teeth uh, are all bloody as he takes an ass whooping I suggest you run <laughs> There's more of us than there are of you. Uh, and he looks like he is going to swing his scimitar at you. He crits with a 23 Whoa. for 12 slashing damage. Pru Pru, I suggest you run. He, he, <laughs> he spits and then looks up and up swings the scimitar, slashing at your the front of your robes. And after you take the 12 damage, that was, what, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25? Eh, he'll stay where he's at. He's not going to... Well, no, you used your reaction. So he's going to back away five feet. <laughs> Got you good. We then go to... Sin. Okay, Sin is going to take all of his movement and get to about here. Okay. Could you? And I see. Is it 40 feet? Yeah, 40 feet. 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 30, 40. Okay, got it. And I see. You are in somebody's square, though. I'm in some. I'm sitting in somebody's. Yeah, yeah you're in Patches's square. Oh, I see. So, how would that work? You would not be so able I... to progress past his. Um, so, 40 feet or would get I you 30. Could you go like diagonally? Uh, around a corner? No. Because you can't go through a, a wall corner. You can dash if you want to get further in there. It seems like the fighting, or whatever is going on, is not immediately where Patches is. You know, the ranged guy. Right, right. Uh. You hear, I will say, you can hear the, the exchange between Prudence and whoever she's fighting off in this direction. Um... You can you can dash and see you can use your action to dash and see if you can know more. No, I I see uh, Patches sit, uh, sitting there, and I'm just going to converse with him about what's around the corner. Uh, Patches, what do you see? Well, there's a dead fellow over there, but Miss Prudence went on around that corner. She sounds like she's fighting somebody. Sounds like she's winning. I mean, depends. 
All right. Um. Okay. Uh, I I think we should kind of wait to see what happens. And that will end the turn. Okay. Are you holding any action? So you only moved. Um. I mean, I guess I could hold. Uh. I can hold a. Uh, an axe action if somebody comes over here attack. and tries to uh, yeah. take on patches. Okay. An attack action. An Someone. action. That you had that opportunity <laughs> right in front of you. Man, <laughs> we have a lot of fun here. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so you hold your action. We then go to this man thing. 5, 10, 15. Patches and sin. You hear a door opening. Yeah, to, I figured. To the left. Not orang to the right. To the left. Uh, Alright. 15, 20, 25, 30. This guy is going to charge at... Pa it's going to dash, so he's not going to be able to attack. But, I'll tell you what you can do. 5, 10, 15. So, Sin, you can use your reaction to attack. He does have... Because you're trying to hit around a corner. He has plus 2 to his armor class. Okay. That is enough to hit. Okay. You deal six damage to him and catch him in the shoulder. And he goes, ah! As he uh, as you got his non-scimitar arm uh, as he looks to be taking you and or patches down with a swing if he can. Uh, but that is his turn. Well, he would also get hit by the gathered swarm. Uh, within that range? You... Yeah. Yeah. So any time I hit anything, the gathered swarm will hit. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, you're you're gonna have to remind me until I until I get it. It's fine. Memorized. Okay. Um. What did what do they do? They're like, do they go into the wound or, like, what do they, what do they do? Oh, nice. Uh, flavor wise, uh, they, um, yeah, they they just they they crawl into orifices and sting and, and oh. do all kinds of terrible things. Great. <laughs> He's still up, although he is definitely much worse for wear after that, uh, after the fact. Um, all right. We go then to the next boy. Uh, ooh, that one. Oh, no, wait, no, it was, it was the other, the other two. Okay. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. This one uh, slides past his friend and sees you and goes, hey, we got one! And we'll take a swing at you, Prudence. Uh, 16? That hits. Okay. Uh, that deals 6 slashing damage. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Uh, he doesn't know that you've used your reaction, so he doesn't know better to leave that space. So he's going to stay there. Um, the uh, the Azavan, uh, seeing his friend at the end of the hallway, pe slowly peering around a corner. Prudence, you can hear uh, from, even though you're in combat, you can sort of hear something approaching behind Mara. 25, 30, 35. So he's going to dash oh. there. So I get to take my reaction to shoot him? Uh, yeah. You, you didn't want to take your reaction to shoot the guy that was coming towards you? Um, oh, I thought... Sorry, I was, like, facing this direction i didn't know if i could like use it both directions yeah the other the other guy that opened the door wasn't being stealthy um this okay. this one was so okay well i will um i will say that i'm probably facing the guy that attacked me so sure i probably wouldn't see this guy so i'll, I'll shoot him I i'll retro yeah i'll let you be able to shoot him before okay. he gets to you well we'll oh, kind of rewind you. it a second yeah, sorry. I I didn't I wasn't sure exactly how that holding an action in like directional stuff would work. It, when you're in combat, it's assumed that you're probably yeah. like, you're alert and you're looking all around. Okay. Right? Um 
Does a 10 hit? I've rolled a 4 and a 3 so far in this combat. It, no, it does not. Okay. Well, carry on. All right. Uh, at this point, Mara, you can tell that there's a guy standing right behind you, um, but you did not hear him approach. Um, that He dashed, so he cannot do anything, but he he looks to be currently, like, he sees you for a second, but then looks where the, uh, where the light source kind of shines on the back of Prudence and a floating, uh, or no, a uh, ice lizard looking thing. And we go to your turn. Um, what's my spell casting modifier? Is that the five? Plus five, yeah. Can you cast spells in wild shape? I don't know. I was just curious if I put healing word in here correctly. Oh. Um, I think event eventually she can. I'm not sure if she can yet. Um, does it take an action for me to revert to my normal form? Um, let's see. It doesn't say. You can you can revert to your normal form earlier by using a bonus action on your turn. You automatically revert if you fall unconscious, drop to zero hit points, or die. Or if, like, the cat, if the cat takes a hit. I get to die as myself. <laughs> well, like, if, if he takes a swing and hits you in cat form, your, your cat hit points get used first. Right. Th then anything left over spills into your uh, centaur hit points. Um, and can I switch? Can I use my... Because I can... I do wild shape as a free action. So can I switch my shape as an act, as a free action? Like into a different creature? Um... I can't... I wouldn't... I don't see why not. I'll okay. say... I'll say yes uh, for yeah. now. Okay. Um... I have two hit points? Jesus Christ. Um, okay, uh, so I hear this guy behind me, right? And he has to be within 15 feet of me. Um, so I jump on his face and try to claw his eyes out. Hell yeah. I <laughs> so that that's going to be... So that is just a flat d20 because cats have a plus zero to hit. Okay. Um, and if you do hit... Oh, the no! Okay, you don't hit, but if you did, it would have been 1d1 slashing damage. So you leap up uh, onto his face and try to claw at him, and he kind of just bat bats you away. Okay. Um, as, uh, did you say as a, can I, can I turn back into myself then? As a bonus action, yeah. Okay, yeah. Poof. Poof, back the, in the The cat was no mere cat, but in fact a four-legged centaur. <laughs> Can I have another action to grab him by the throat and pick him up? Uh, you, Fine, you can say no. Yeah, you used your action to a, uh, attack as a cat. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So no. But at least I'm blocking him. <laughs> that is can't true. Go anywhere. He he does seem a bit more surprised that yeah. you are you are a foe and not throws just a, a feline. Throws a cat off his face and it turns into a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he has a moment of confusion. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> did I do that? You can't see his eyes, but his, his mouth says it all. What the... Uh, you can move, although it may provoke an attack of opportunity from him. No, oh, I'm going to stay here and block him. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, it is awfully... I mean, you see the light coming from over here, but other than that, it's a pretty dark hallway. Um, we now go back to top of the round. Prudence, you got a guy in front of you. <laughs> you hear him mutter the void will consume you wait sorry hang on pause do i need to use an action to do a cantrip or can i just do those whenever cantrips would require either an action or a bonus action oh. depending on the cantrip okay yeah. that's fine okay i'll stand here in the dark prudence, prudence. is gonna uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do I'll, I got okay. this one. Prudence is going to punch the enemy in front of her, then use Flurry of Blows to make one one arm strike as a bonus action, and then the second to rest her hand on the chest, on her chest, to use Hand of Healing. All right, punch the guy first. Let's see. Ooh, that first punch is going to miss, but you can. Uh, you're going to spend a key point 
for Flurry of Blows, right? You can, for free, make a uh, bonus action attack, but I think you're probably wanting to use that for your hand of healing. Let me double. Let me just double check for you. Martial Arts lets you do a free bonus action attack. Flurry of Blows lets you be able to do uh, two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. So like, so yeah, so, you, uh, so then in that case you'll spend a key point, you'll do two. Um, first one is going to be your attack and then using one of your... Hands of Healing would require an action, which you're using right now to attack. Um, so I will let you be able to attack twice since you're doing Flurry of Blows. But Hands of Healing, it says as an action, you can spend a key point to do that. Yeah, but, uh, sorry, what she's saying is when you use your Flurry of Blows... Ah, uh, okay, sorry, the text is very... So if you only make one arm, one arm strike, you can then use... Got it. Text, text is tiny. You know your characters more than I do. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, so first one is going to hit. You you miss the first punch. You throw your second punch with Flurry of Blows. It connects, dealing five points of bludgeoning damage. He also gets a very similar uh, fist to the face. No, in the throat. <coughs> he lets out a cough. And then you can use your uh, second Flurry of Blows to heal yourself without spending an extra key point. That's pretty cool. That's super cool. So it is a roll of your Martial Arts die plus your Wisdom modifier. Your Martial Arts die is d4. And your Wisdom modifier is... Bam. So you heal for two points of damage. You can move. I'll let you know that that, uh, would, uh, that would allow him to use his their reaction to make an opportunity attack against you. But you can move. No, just the one that's immediately within five feet of you. The other one doesn't have the reach to get to you. Uh, it is not automatic. He does have to roll for it. Prudence will jump backwards. Alright. Um, I will say in that... You know, for, this is, for what it's worth, too, you could also spend a key point, I think, right? To do Step of the Wind. You could. But if you want... Um, you can do a acrobatics check DC 15 as you try to jump out of the way to avoid an attack of opportunity. If you do not make the, the DC 15, then he'll get to at least attempt to roll to attack you. And he doesn't. Wow. You leap out of, you leap out of his way as he tries to get ready to swing towards you. He realizes you are too fast for him as you jump back with lightning speed and you can go your, uh, you yeah, got 40 feet of movement, so... Own way. Oh, own way. way. You should come back towards us. Yeah. 15. We got this one, Prudence. Don't you fret. 15. Okay, perfect. Sounds Gucci. Okay. What a hell of a turn. Punched a dude, healed yourself, and freaking karate flipped your way out of a possible sword attack. Prudence is so powerful. <laughs> you can't... I imagine MC Hammer doing the you can't touch this. Uh, Alright, so we then go to Poppy. Hello, it's me, Poppy. Uh, okay. Poppy's playtime. <laughs> you ready to play? Let's go. Um... I move this. This guy's very lit. This guy right here is very lit up for me. Okay, he's been drinking, but you don't need to call him out on it, okay? 
Is it the, could it be because there's light coming from this room? Yep, the, the room lit. the room okay. that he's next no. the door he's next to is leaking light out onto him. Okay, so it wouldn't be disadvantage or anything for me to hit him. Since sure, I see him. sure wouldn't. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Eldritch Blast because I'm a warlock. So what else am I gonna do? Uh Please hit. Uh, 22. Hey, it hits. Roll for damage. Free force damage. All right. He and then he blows around. back into the man behind him. Is kind of the man shoves him back back upright. He is not looking good. He's got blood just all over his face. Is this an intelligent creature? Uh, sure. Uh, she's going to um use a sorcery point to win that spell and do it again okay question just so I, for my clarification can you do that after you've cast it or is it yeah okay just making sure Time for bed. Remember, sleeping is a I didn't know if you like you get to know if it hit or not and then decide or not no okay elder blast 23 to hit uh as 22. yeah as as you as you uh use your your inner magic to be able to channel another eldritch blast he looks at he looks at the voice coming down the hall and goes did she just ask if i'm an intelligent <laughs> and gets hit in the face with another blast and he, <laughs> he falls down unconscious well he asked if he's intelligent so that might be a no oh I don't know. <laughs> oh you're gonna get it little fairy i just don't understand and then she <laughs> runs back, <laughs> back to Lee Austin, who can protect her. <laughs> he helped me. That's right. Run away, little girl. All right. We go to Patches. Um, what does the red dot mean on them? Um, so this isn't normally a mechanic that was with 5th edition. It was more with 4th edition. But uh, a red dot indicates that they are bloodied. Which, okay, so yeah. just helping us to know who's really looking hurt. Exactly. I feel like uh, it's up to the DM whether or not they want to tell. They don't. I don't have to tell you when they're about to die. I just think yeah. that it's helpful. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, Patches is gonna look at Jolene and say, "It's time to two-step, girl." And then oh, he's wow. going to use uh, Zephyr Strike which means that his movement does not provoke opportunity attacks. He's going to go right here and then shoot this guy. And uh, he's going to use Zephyr Strike to give himself advantage on this attack, and it will deal an extra 1d8 force damage on a hit. Okay. Let's go ahead. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. That would Holy. be two... Two criticals. Du Damn. A double oh. crit all the way. Um, so that would be uh, nine plus eight piercing damage. Okay. So uh, plus plus the eight from Zephyr or one d eight from Zephyr strike. Yeah. Uh, which I'll just go ahead and roll that. Go ahead and add three. Okay. So this this shot, as you channel this sort of wind that comes out of nowhere, giving you the ability to leap over into this intersection and see another target that was in, likely in combat with Prudence, you let loose your bow and the arrow flies and hits him so hard that he flies back 20 feet, <laughs> falls down unconscious and dead, and knocks off the guy that is at the end of the hallway. As you hear <laughs> a Wilhelm scream as fade off into the uh, the unknown abyss 1980s <laughs> action star combat whoa patches that was an intelligent creature good job <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how smart he was standing in front of that ledge um and at the same time as patches is running the other way jolene's gonna run the opposite direction and attack this fellow okay and that would be a 19 for 8 piercing damage. 
Sorry, just adding a uh, poppy quote to her Wikipedia page. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 19 is definitely going to hit, and 8 piercing damage is going to m- make him fall down and no longer brief. There are those good rolls, Ryan. <laughs> I know. I wasted both. I wasted a crit on one with advantage where I got another crit. <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> Welcome to d and I'll take it, though. Heck yeah. <laughs> All right. Patches is done. All right. You you, you sh- should have plenty of movement, though, still, don't you? Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, she increases so by 5, 30, 10, mo- 30 15, feet. 20. Yeah, so I got, um, I got a lot of movement, so... Taking some peaks in places. Okay. Uh, yeah, patches will end it. Like, mm, we'll stay out here. Okay. While you were in there, you noticed that this obviously was clearly a dining hall with a bunch of small dwarven chairs and tables, uh, a large uh, fireplace. But that doesn't matter. Your friends are in danger. We go to <laughs> Lee Austin. We got we got vittles when we're done. Lee Austin, you've noticed that there has been no. Sound coming from around you. Most of the combat itself has come from what you can hear to the south. Hmm. The door next to me is still closed. The door next to you is still closed, yes. Can I hear anybody? I can't hear anybody inside. Uh, you can make a quick perception check. That w- that won't take any part of your action economy for the turn. Okay, um, let's see. You can take a good old old man ear next to the door to see if you hear anything. I would like to, and I could also add, wait, does it, wait. I also add a D4 to it because of Sentinel's intuition. Ooh, yes, that's right. All right, so put my old man ear to the door and then I'll use wisdom. Wait, so I click on wisdom, right? Uh, perception. It's the skill. Perception. Yeah. And then you would just, after that, you would roll an additional d4 to add to it. Nin- I mean... <laughs> 19's pretty good, but it could always be higher. You had it. Yeah, you had it right. Is the d4. Just click... No. Just the the one the D four that you were hovering over a second ago. Right there. Boom. Hey, it, it, <laughs> one more is one more. You take a quick here through the door. You do not hear anything. Damn it! Absolute silence. Hmm. I know this is weird. Is that Pedro Pascal? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Without facial hair? Don't like it. <laughs> it's Wonder from the Woman. Wonder Woman movie. I haven't seen it. Yeah, don't watch it. Yeah, it's not worth it. <laughs> okay. Um, mm. Okay, so yeah, there's no one there. You still have all your all of your turn. That didn't cost anything. Mm-hmm. Lee Austin's going to make his way south. Okay. So you, you can you can at least see uh, towards the end of that torchlight, uh, Prudence, who is kind of clutching her side right now. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty. As he's passing, he. Uh, Lee Austin gestures the sword behind him. Like, keep an eye on them. You get 10 more feet, 25, 30. There you go. You can see a pretty, uh, a couple of bodies just laying around. Kind of just stepped over one carefully. <laughs> Looking around, um. Howdy, Lee kind of waves and looking back and forth. There's one person still alive with Mara, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. You have dark vision. Yeah, you see that there's a man behind Mara who is just now finally getting over the fact that that, that wasn't a cat. 
So I have hand axes. Can I throw them? That throw weapons, right? I, I believe. Yes. Yeah, I yes, believe you can throw those. Yeah, hand axes are in fact thrown weapons. Um, that would be using your. Um, I believe it's when it's thrown, it's dex. So uh, twenty feet. So what the twenty sixty means? This is a good time to explain this. <coughs> 20 means you can go throw it 20 feet, no disadvantage. If And then the second thing, anything after 20 feet up to 60 feet has disadvantage. So kind of like the knife th throwing game. Exactly. Although this is much more lethal. And he is 20 feet away. So yep. uh, Leofson's going to see the guy I like. He's going to tuck his sword under his arm, grab the hand axe from his belt, do kind of a cool little like flippy flip, grab it, and then hawk it at the guy uh, trying to get over Vara's head. And Heck it's a dexterity yeah. throw. Yeah, so what you'll do is, uh, you're proficient, so you can click uh, dex the word dexterity uh, mm -hmm. above your above that the one that you have in dexterity, and then add two to it, because you're proficient. Um, I would, uh, <laughs> very nice, very nice, very nice. Uh, you could also add a hand axe parentheses thrown attack to, uh, the attacks and spell casting for later, but okay. that, that's a crit baby. So go ahead and roll, uh, click that dexterity or oh, wait, no, you can't. Um, hand axe does, it, does, does it do the same. If it's a crit, it does, uh, all, full damage. Yeah. It's a D six plus six. Plus your uh, dexterity modifier, which is one. So roll a d6. Six plus six plus one is 13. So you manage to flip around this corner and just look uh, the the one person that is uh, left standing that's in opposition and just chuck your hand axe and it flies. Mara just finishes changing out of being a cat and back into Mara shape. And her wing kind of unfolds as this guy had no idea what was coming. And an axe hits him square in the head. And he falls over in one fell hit. He now has your axe, though. So My axe, no! <laughs> you can go pick it up. <laughs> uh, but, but he is currently dead. They also kind of snorts a laugh. Like, tries not to be too proud of himself, but like he hasn't done that in a while. But it was, it was kind of cool. Uh, anything else? For off. Yeah, yeah, very nice. Anything else for your turn? Yep, that's it. Okay. Uh, we go to Tendi. Okay, so I can. Mm, I don't want to move my character yet. Um, so the room that I'm near, I, there's nobody in there that I can see or hear. Yes. Can I see or hear anything down this way? Um, which way? Left or right? Uh, you can see. Let's see. What do you see? You can see another. You can see a, a ballista and a long hallway and flickering light coming from the very ed end over here. Tendi will remember that for later if Tendi lives. Okay, um, I'm going to use. Yes. No. Click and I click this. Feline agility. Hell yeah. And I'm going to just chill out with the big boys up here. 10, 15, 20, 20 um, 30, 30, 40. Okay. I have 60. I'm good. Okay. Is your, your normal 40, though, or is it is it 30? My normal's 30. Ah, uh, got it. Okay, cool. That works. So I'm going to do that. I'm double-checking something real quick. While you're checking that, I do need to clarify uh, for Lee Austin. Um, when you make a use a thrown weapon, you actually do use the same so strength instead of dex. It didn't matter because you crit and you killed the guy, but 
it'll be better later on. I say it thank because I need to try to remember that. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. How? Let's find that. Hang on. I'm looking something up in the little. You're good. Book. I'm just an old poor DM who has to go to the bathroom every now and again. So I, I, oh, I, I can I, take much longer. That's okay. No, That's no, no, no. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about me forgetting things. <laughs> there are no bathroom breaks in D&D. There are. <laughs> Believe me. Maybe not when I was more young and spry and could hold it for days, but... Ew. Mm. Um, so I... <laughs> Tendy, Tendy gets like down on all fours and just like goes past Poppy and then does like the cat thing between Prudence's legs mm -hmm. and then pops up on the other side facing Prudence and just hands her a greater healing potion. Okay. So you can. And goes, here, Poo Poo. Poo Poo. So you hand over a small red vial of liquid that you, Prudence, would know is a healing potion. A greater healing potion? Yeah, because it's got a big G printed on the side. No, it's just a little bit bigger. It's a... Uh, it's got like the... It's like a vent the image of a normal <laughs> potion, but then it says like plus three, like the they do on those... No, it's, of it, it says venti on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Same power as a potion, half the size. There's 8 ounce, 12 ounce, 16 <laughs> ounce, and 24 ounce. And uh, I feel like giving that kind of is an action, right? I can't really do anything else. Yeah, Prudence, for you to drink it, you could use a bonus action to drink it, and that would be you would roll for healing. Or you could take your action and get the maximum amount of healing from that potion, which greater potion is 4d4 plus 4, so a total of 20 hit points you could gain back from that. Ooh, so you might not even need to use it right now. Yeah. Okay. So you feel an agility over there. Give Pru Pru a potion of greater healing. I went from like that wasn't bad. French to Jamaican <laughs> so fast. That was pretty good. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. Anyways, is that the end of your turn, Tendi? Yeah. All right. Uh, we then go to <laughs> this guy, um, who originally snuck up and was lying in wait. Seeing his friends massacred, briefly, you see him book it. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30, 25, 30. He dashes away, and you hear footsteps leaving in quick haste. Uh, we then go to the man who um, w got pushed off of the cliff. You do not hear any more screaming. <laughs> uh, this man has died. The one who got shot and bumped into his friend. So that brings us to Sin's turn. Okay, Sin does not see anything, so he's going to, um, as he runs by Jolene, he'll pat her lovingly on the head. She, and she kind of coos up next to you. And then, uh, yeah, Sin will, let's see. It's 20 feet. And then, um. I'm just looking around. I'm noticing that everything is basically dead in front of me. Currently, you don't see any aggressors. Um, you probably see a few of your compatriots who have seen someone run by, but were not in a means to do anything about it. So I'll just walk up to her. I guess I'll run up to Leostin. Um, is is everything okay? Are, 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 are there still foes about? Leostin nods and kind of up nods back past where Mara, Mara was, having just seen the guy skitter scatter. 
Just one so far. Just uh, over there next to where you, uh, I can see Mario from there. She, you said that there, there might be somebody beyond there. Yeah, yeah, there's a... It's a... Sorry, I was that leap. You have to take scare the scanner. Um, yeah, man was running down the hallway to the left. Okay. And uh, Sin will use his climbing speed to just kind of go above Lee Austin. Okay. And stop about right here. And that'll be my full <coughs> bit of movement. And I will save an attack. Um. I'll I'll save a javelin throw if I see anybody coming at Mara. Okay. Are you in the air? Are you above five feet in the air? Currently, right now? Mm-hmm. No, no. As soon as, as, soon as I went over the top of Leofston, I would have Go back gone down. back onto the ground, and then I, I'm not, I'm just assuming that the the ceilings are high enough for me to do all that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. For most of you in the hallway, you just see like <laughs> climbing over Leofston. Leofston kind of just. Um. All right, and that is your turn, Mara. You, uh, what what do you want to do before we get to the end of the round? Right now, it does not seem that there are anyone that is currently a target, or at least any noise you can tell. Although your hearing's not so good. I think you might be muted again. Hello. There check, we check. go. Sorry, I, was... I had to go check on dinner. Um, there's one dude left. There's no dude dudes left. You saw one that ran, um, from where the other two behind you have fallen, uh, run off towards the north, and footsteps obviously trailing away. But as far as you know, there currently are no targets for you in which to uh, okay. to hit. Um, okay, so I'm going to produce flame. I just want to hold it, dude. Okay, let's see. Uh, flame. Not a young flame dragon, just a flame. I just need a flame. Oh, I, no, I have I have it as a cantrip. I know, I'm trying to... Oh. I'm basically going to give you... A oh, torch. you're going to give me one? Yeah, okay. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you a torch. That's fine. I think that's what we did last time. Yeah. Uh, pfft, handouts. Nope. Tools. There we go. Torch. Blah. Aha! Oh my god, I can see so much. <laughs> How do you do that little ping thing? Uh, hold down the left mouse button. Ah. Okay. Um, so... I'm gunst to... Since y'all are blocking me in... Uh, I'm gonna walk over these dead dudes into here. Is this a door? I need to jump over them, right? Uh, no, they're they're on the ground. You can basically step up. You can step on them. You can step over them. Doesn't matter. Can you sticky my torch to me? Uh, if you click and drag highlight just your square, that includes the torch. Then whenever you move, it'll move with you. Okay. Um, you Plus see, eight. you see Five, a, you see a door down here. Okay. You see a vast, empty nothingness after this drops mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. And you see a hallway up this way. Okay. Um, hang on. Let me go back here. And I can move 40 feet. Uh, you wouldn't be able to move through the room. So, yeah, you got to go 15 yeah. feet there and then wherever. Nope, stop it. Wherever so after 15 that. 15 plus 25 here. You can get right to that okay. door, yep. Itch. Why are you wagging? All right. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> inside this room, you can see, at least from what the door shows, a bunch of small couches and coffee tables and bookshelves and a small fireplace that lets off a very dim glow and candles adorn these small tables. Off in the distance in the over here you can see barrels and crates stacked on top of each other on top of some rocky rubble. Okay. Um I don't think 
I mean, I've I've got light, right? So perception checks aren't gonna do shit. Can I do? Um... I will. I will say though. You can see to the south of you. Yeah. Is that? Is uh, it a? Is it like collapsed? It is a very large uh, chasm. Across the way, you can see the other side with a bridge leading to it, a wooden mm -hmm. rope bridge. And this can area see seems... The say what? Giants. Can I see the giant spider webs? You see... Yeah, the whole area is covered in massive oh. Uh, oh, okay, spider webs. I see. I see, I see. So that's like a cliff face. Oh! There are okay. columns there, obviously, that give off yeah. light on either side. Okay. Um, cool, 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 cool. Cool. Um, can I do... There's gotta be something in that, in that chasm. What do I want to look for? Can I do an arcana check? For that for what? Help me. I'm... Well, obviously there's a giant fucking spider somewhere. Well, you so... don't. You don't see it. No. And and you don't see the bottom of this chasm. It goes okay. off into complete pitch black. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't think there's anything else for me to do. I can't move. So. Okay. Well, then I'm in that. Gonna... I say with that. Technically, effectively, we are out of combat. I want to go ahead and award inspiration to Patches and Leofston. Hooray! For that one. Yeah, oh, kill the boy. Wow, thank you. Um, however, you are... We're not in combat, but you still are very much aware yeah. of uh, the one that got away further into... The Citadel. Um, can we, real uh, quick, can I run back into that room and get that map? Sure. 10 e absolutely does that. Uh, we're not in combat at all, so... Like, um... uh, should we move, can... Should we canvas these empty... I can't read. Should we canvas these empty rooms or move forward? We should see if we can find anything on these fellows that might help us understand what we're up against. They seem like cultists of some sort. Yes, yeah. we... This room empty! Jordan, is this door unlocked? Can I just walk in here? Yeah. We should take some time and just get a good look around everything. Yeah, some nods and... I'm so sorry. Go ahead. No, um, it, it's fine, Leofstin, if you have something else. I was just going to go get my axe. Excuse me. Is there anything worth taking in here? Um, okay. Well, that's what we'll do first. Um, so, before, before everyone... I just gotta keep an eye on uh, you cats as you go around everywhere. Mara, uh, you want to search through that room and see if you find anything? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's going to take you about probably five minutes of really trying, you know, really looking. But you okay. you do find some stuff. Let's you want to circle back? No, no, no. I can, I can do it now. Um, so you find one, two, three, four, five. One. You find a oil of Taggett, or a, a vial that is essentially, uh, yeah, a vial of viscous black liquid. You do not know what it is. Is that the same thing as the oil of Taggett? Or are those two different items? No, it's the same thing. I just named it. Um, okay. So you put un unknown black liquid in parentheses oil of Taggett, although you don't you don't don't know what it is. That'll help me when you're like, how much is this? What is this? Then I can at least look it up. Um, you find a tan tan, which looks to be a tambourine. You find a scimitar inside that is double bladed. A rain catcher. Hang on. Can I 
can't spell or type that fast. You're fine. Okay, and then you, what was the other? What was after the tambourine? Uh, a double-bladed scimitar. A rain catcher. Seems like an odd thing to have in a dungeon. All right. Okay. And a javelin arm blade. Looks like something that is mechanical in its make. You, you know that you only know it holds a javelin because in it is a javelin but uh it is just something that looks like it is part of an arm but with a javelin on, uh, attached to it okay um yep. and that is what you find uh prudence is saying she's checking the bodies of uh the ones that are in the hallway with her okay uh, you find 15 gold on the one that you're on top of, Prudence. And seven silver on that one. We should take all the bodies and put them in one of the rooms. That way, um, if somebody does come in, it's not a massacre. That's an us in agreement and checks these two bodies over here. Okay. Uh, I'm going to I'll roll those up real quick. Uh, Tendi, the room that you're in, just to reiterate, there's a door right here. The map itself looks to be of the uh, surrounding region. Outside, it is not an inside uh, uh, map. Mm. But it, it, it has pictures of iron crags, obviously an icon that indicates with a circle around it that this is the golden citadel of Fryunder. Uh, it looks to be something that maybe the humanoids you just fought uh, used to get here. Uh, there are also some shelves uh, in, in this particular room. Is there anything on them of interest? Uh, there's a few like books and, and rolled up papers. I want to look around the room. While you're looking, uh, Leofton, you find 12 silver on one and 11 copper on the other. Thank you. Uh, we look at... Uh, on the shelves that you find are various mining logs, but in, in, stuck between two books, Tendi, you find a... Uh, a potion, a bottle, a vial that is not red like a healing potion. It is instead kind of a goldish yellow. Ooh, I'll take that. Do I know what it is? Uh, the way that I identify potions in the game is you can like dip a finger in and like and taste it. That doesn't consume the potion. So I'll I can just yeah, I can just tell you basically. Assuming that you do yeah, this. Now, granted, yeah, I I can't always assume people do this because sometimes things are poisoned. But do you do this for this one? Um, before I do that, can I? Um, I don't see anybody anymore. Everybody moved. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I will do that. Okay. Uh, as you kind of pick it up. Uh, you notice that it is not just yellow, but as you as you pick it up, there's layers to this. There's a brown, brown, silver, and gray. As you pick it up, they start to swirl and mix. And as you kind of taste your, uh, put, dip your finger in and, and taste a little bit of it, you can tell that this is a potion of climbing. Ooh. Um, okay, real quick, Poppy and Patches, we haven't done anything with you guys. What is it you would like to do? Uh, Patches would like to open the doors to this room and, uh, this room that he's standing kind of next to. Okay. Uh, and just see if there's anything in there. 
This is a bedroom with basically just beds, but there's a door right here. Oh, let's see what's behind door number two. And behind that door is sort of a small, uh, is a more private bedroom with candles, uh, some papers on a small desk, and a small chest. Mm. Anything interesting in the papers? Uh, the papers themselves are um, just kind of a a log. It looks like a dwarvish dwarvish t uh, writing. I do know dwarven. If there's anything interesting, you do. Okay. Uh, on on it, it details the um, that it basically indicates that this is. The area that you're in is the largest part of the Citadel. It mentions a grand feasting hall. It mentions a large open uh, mining... Uh, a large open mining tunnel that has recently <coughs> opened up um, after a large collapse. There are... There's a throne room. There are there is a worshiping center. There are various uh, smaller dining halls and various other bedrooms, uh, and it kind of just and but the biggest thing that you notice is that there is what they call in this document uh, the Grand Forge. Interesting. Um, Patches will kind of just stow these notes away um, and show them with the group. Uh, when they'll convene, and then uh, is the chest locked, or can I open it? Uh, the chest appears locked. Okay. Um, is it is it a, like a carryable chest, or is it like a big chest? Yeah, you can put you can put it underneath your arm. Okay, I'll uh, I'll just carry it out to the rest of the group. It's um, pretty hefty, but not not anything you are unable to carry. Yeah, I'm not planning on like taking it super far mm -hmm. um, and then I'll go ahead and uh, explore this listen okay I'll get to that in a second poppy what were you doing okay. um there is a door here right there is is it locked it doesn't appear to be <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna open it <laughs> As your hand goes to the handle and turns the handle just slightly, you hear a soft click. And then the door opens like normal. <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice door. I like it. It clicked real well. It's I a, go in. It's a bedroom. You got sleepy, cranky, grumpy, happy doc, and you got a whole bunch of dwarven beds. And a uh, sort of a large desk, long table at the end of this room that uh, that has a few mining, like a mining pick and a few other implements. Hammer, chisel. Uh, you find a short sword and a dagger on there. Do we need weapons? Does weapons count as treasure? Check the mattresses for cash. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I go check the mattresses for cash. I'm kidding. Um, Poppy wouldn't think of doing that. Uh, she'll try to. She, the, the thought process in her head is, well, we're in a monster hunting guild, and some of those people might like break their weapon or something and need new weapons so then she's going to try to carry all the weapons at once okay uh, yeah Pick but them all up. you have yeah with with me that you have a uh short sword and a dagger and then i would say miner's tools um that you carry out of there okay poppy it d don't run with those uh but 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 it's fine. I have the blade up, so it's safe. <laughs> um, just, just hand hand some of those to me, and and I'll make. Go to. 
Okay. Prudence, <laughs> yes. that, Prudence was checking the food hall. Um, there is uh, a pot of boiling something or other uh, in the st the fireplace. Um, there are d dinnerware set out, a few bread rolls, um, and jars of various things. Uh, you taste it. You grab a ladle and you pull the hot soup to your lips, and you go. <sighs> it is not good soup. <laughs> it's just poorly made bread soup. These people were no cooks. There is a door right here. There are also barrels, large barrels, uh, up on this side of the wall. There are taps. And looks over at Leostin and just says, um, I'm gonna go check on the wagon and the, the animals, or we'll make sure that they're fine. Just let you know so that you know how long I've been gone. He nods, and then just kind of, like, chuckles. He's like, let the fairy run with the sword. She learns a lesson one time. Um, Prudence, you notice that it is, uh, it is beer. It's a dark amber beer. The one thing I will make sure not to do is at the end of the session, I will not refresh the treasure page, because that... Um, from the moment that this combat ended, I have everything you have, and I can be able to dic to notate it rather well. So anything before this, I don't have. But we did rec we are recording, so that works. Um, all right, Sin, you go off to keep an eye on the cart. Um, as you right. turn the corner, your heart stops for a second, thinking you won't find it. It's there. No worries. Um, Prudence, the beer you've had is damn good beer. I don't know. You've had beer before. Yeah, this is good beer. Um, just to remind you, there is a door right here. Um, we, let's see. Okay. Uh, Poppy or not Poppy, uh, Tendi. We'll go to Tendi, and um, we'll go back to Patches as he's exploring I, that room. I want to go down this hallway, but I don't want to go by myself. Okay, there was a there was a door in here. I don't know if you. I mean, I don't know if you forgot, but it's there. I just feel like every time we open a door, bad things happen. So if okay. I can avoid opening doors, I'll be pretty happy. Very I'll fair. Come with you if you want. <laughs> this is a good idea. Let's do that. Um. You... Yes, I'm the two squishiest characters. Yeah, can I listen to the door? Holding a sword. Yes, you can listen to the door. Absolutely. You can. I want to do that. That's perception, right? Mm hmm. <laughs> Meanwhile, Patches has opened like four doors already. <laughs> Actually, mm, I have a question about one of my spells. So I have a spell called Message. Yeah. And I can basically point and if someone if the person is within range I can whisper a message to them and they can talk back to me. Correct. Do I have to know exactly where they are? Mm mm. It, like it, I know where the hallway is. Yeah, it, unless it says line of sight, how how far is the distance? With well, message you just need to know the distance and like the general direction and then you're good. Um, God, hang on. Let me check a ruler real quick. Mari. Can I just okay. uh, point? Um, I'm going to point over in Lee Austin's direction. 
Okay. And okay. just uh, say, this room empty, bring bodies here. Like telling Lee Austin? Because he's. he's Le a yes. Lee Austin, in your mind, you hear Tendi's voice speaking directly to you. Lee Austin from the tanker, he's drinking his. This is some heavy beer, man. <laughs> he kind of stares at the tanker, like, really upset. Looks at Prudence to see if she heard it, too. Damn, this is really good beer. Holy shit. And then I want to open the door. Okay. Or listen through the door. I think I was listening through it. Correct. Any perception check for you? The often uh, the 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 voice uh, says says what it says, and then nothing else. Blood, blood, rube, blood. Did, blood. Through this drinks again. <laughs> through the door, you hear nothing. Does Lee Austin actually say that? Yes. Okay. Teddy opens the door. <laughs> she can't hear. He can't. They can hear you say one thing back, and that is what they heard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you open up the door, and inside is a large, wide bed. A few, uh, a dresser of sorts, a wooden closet with hanging uh, clothes, and a small chest. Is the chest locked? You're not in the room, you wouldn't know. I know, I'm trying to move, but my laptop will not let me move my person. <laughs> Hang on, I'm working on it. You're good. I forget what time of day we left on this journey, was it? early in the morning or was it later in the day when did we get here well it took you three days and you left you left in the morning mm -hmm. but I think by the time you got here it was uh, I think you guys went in a good enough pace where it's basically three exact days later so it's like it's a little later in the morning now later in the morning now yep. okay. uh, the chest that you're looking at Tendi right here it does appear to have a lock on it Can I pick it up? Is it tiny? It's you could fit it underneath your arm. What's your strength score? Negative one. Uh, it weighs fifty pounds. So, it if you're in danger, you might want to drop it. Otherwise, if you're not in combat, it's safe that you could probably carry that around to a degree. Like, is there any kind of clothes? Yeah, there's a bunch of different like pants, uh, all covered in various forms of soot, uh, cleaned off as best as it could, and uh, tunics. We could pretend I... to be miners. Can I? Oh, <gasps> I might change what I'm doing. Uh, Teddy's gonna put some clothes, pick up the chest, put it down on a pair of pants. Tie the pants around it. Okay. And then grab the knot and just like drag it. Because if it's on clothes, it won't make sound. Mm, yeah. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you guys are certainly louder than a dragging chest on, on a pair of, you know, <laughs> Levi's. Poppy Tendi's been yelled. very quiet this entire time. How dare you? Ah, we need a stealth roll. That's what we... For me? Yep, if you're trying to be quiet, you want to let me know so I can have you make a stealth roll. Poppy, you'll probably want to make one as well. Since you are okay. with Ditendi. And I just feel like Poppy just yelled out, We could dress up like miners! So, you know. Yeah, that didn't go very well. <laughs> oh, no. My my thing is lagging a lot. Okay. Hold up. Ah. There we go. 
stealth? Yep. Yeah, that's about right. That makes sense. That tracks. <laughs> so, t t tend to had advantage though. <laughs> tend to you've been you've been pretty quiet, but you do hear Poppy kind of exclaim out loud, "We could be miners." She's also been Tendy Poppy tosses the Poppy the clothes. Now you have a yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Going like back. Uh, going back to Mara real quick. Uh, Mara, you seem to be getting pretty well acquainted with that uh, double-edged, double-bladed scimitar. I'm getting really well acquainted with how to put shit in roll twenty. Is what's happening. Hell yeah. <laughs> and uh, what proficiencies are? <laughs> yeah, it's a martial weapon, so you have to you have to see if you're proficient in it. Pro I am. Oh. And I can use a two-handed. A druid using a metal-bladed weapon. I think druids do get proficiency in scimitar. Yeah, it's I like do. one of those weird ones. I also have pro proficiency in spear. Nice. Mm. Okay. So I think it's just that's... it's just metal armor. I think that druids can't do. It's got a it's got a bonus action built in, which is pretty dope. Uh, Leofton, I'm. Can I assume you are probably taking these bodies into this room? That was. Yeah. So you'll pick up this first one right here that he's standing on. I can, I mean, I'll, I'll move them, but are, okay, you, and then, you, are you moving every one of them? Um, I mean, if he physically can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh-oh. Freddy's back. Uh, Prudence is helping. Okay. So Prudence and Leofton make their way up to the north with these bodies uh, and bring them in one by one. Oh. Into, can I move? Can yeah. I move? Yeah, you can move. I'm keeping an eye on where people probably Do I have to be. leave out the door? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. You can't go through walls. It won't let me move my thing. Use use the arrow keys. The arrow key, easier. yeah, arrow keys are going to be the the easiest. Um sends way back, he grabs one of these guys that are in this room here. Yeah. Bam. And uh, he comes this way and takes them to. I assume he gets the gist of what's going on. Uh, I mean, you're outside, but you can collect these bodies in this room. You don't know exactly where the where they're being built unless you see what they're doing. Right. Um, Mara, I'm gonna assume you didn't say "damn" out loud. Right. Yeah, no, I didn't. Okay, uh, you can see that most people are kind of shuffling in and out of the room over here to your le uh, to your left. Um, I'm gonna quickly vocally note that I uh, Lee Austin grabbed his axe, got <laughs> step on the guy's body and like wrench it free of his dead head, but yeah, as, as axe back. Sin, That's you can fair. you can eventually collect the bodies and uh, and see that they're being put into this room. So you, you can okay. do, you can do that. Uh, all right, so everyone else except for Patches, stop what you're doing. Uh, we're gonna end with Patches searching this room, and then we'll probably end it here. Uh, there's no door in this room besides the one that you walked through. There is a small chest, uh, and a stove, and a personal oven. Uh, various jars are in this room. There is uh, a dividing wall that splits off two bedrooms, and there is a. Um, long piece of paper that looks like a official um, poster or some sort of promotional uh, thing indicating um, the untold untold treasures of Cit the Citadel for you in there and kind of a propaganda map or a uh, poster to give up your current life and get rich digging in a mine um, with a couple of mining hammers on top of a table and the, and a small chest. Okay. Is the chest uh, locked? It is locked. Okay. Um, well, I already got one chest. Um, Jolene, you think you can drag this back to the rest of them? Um, Jolene does have 16 strength. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just kind of bring our ourselves up to the rest of the group we just dump two chests okay uh so you have two 
Tendi found one. All of them are locked because who leaves unlocked chests around? Happy. Ah. <laughs> and say it a little bit louder so people or people nearby can hear and then go raid your chest at your house. I'm already allowed. I rolled four on my stealth. That's fair. Uh, I'm so, coffee, so, you know. so what we will do is we will currently we will end it here where everyone is at um, as you have collected all of the bodies of the uh, unfortunate recipients of many a melee and, and ranged blows um, except for the one guy that got away and the one guy that got away via an express trip to the bottom of this uh, the crevice Ma Mara I assume you probably tell people about what you saw And you guys have three locked chests full of something weighted, although you don't know without any means to currently unlock them. And there is, from what Tendi saw, a long hallway leading to a large, uh, a large, flickering light at the uh, at the end of it, which can only assume to be more possible danger lying in wait. And that is where we will end tonight's session.